don't be afraid to be seen trying. It's something that's been repeating in my mind this whole week. Last week, I put up a video about um, essentially like my my goal and my declaration of some sorts and my kind of like positive affirmation that I've turned 34 and this year I'm going to become a millionaire. And I want you to join along for the journey. So if you haven't subscribed, you haven't liked, you haven't put, turned on the notific notification bell, then please do. What I feel is important about this is... Sometimes it's really embarrassing. Sometimes it's really, you might feel a bit of shame or embarrassment or like, how could I uh, do this thing? And um, I want to show you that it's important to, to not be afraid about that. And I've done it because of course, saying that I'm going to become a millionaire, there's two ways. I become a millionaire, which is going to happen, or I miss the mark. However, in missing the mark, that's still a good thing because I'm showing you publicly that it's fine to fail. So essentially to me, it's a win-win. So the outcome is not going to really matter as such, but it's my goal, it's my journey, and I'm going to share as much as I can about that and some of the things that I'm thinking about to encourage you along your journey. Now, you don't have to have the same goal. Um, it, it might be something completely different, and that's fine. It doesn't have to be the same scale. It could be completely different. But ultimately, what I'm trying to do is kind of encourage you to be like, hey, if you need that 5% encouragement to just do that thing that you've been holding back, you, you, you know what the thing is, like in your mind's eye, or like when you close your eyes and think about something, or you visualize something, or you dream about something, it's that business, or it's that job, or it's that side hustle, or it's that um, traveling, wh whatever that thing is, I want you to kind of like be encouraged to step, just like one step towards it. U ultimately, our best is outside our comfort zone. I've learned that through doing business for the last seven years, I think now. Um, and this is what I want to show you. I want to show you that I'm pushing myself out um, of my comfort zone. So another thing I've been doing this week is live streaming. I've never really done intense live streaming before. I've done a little bit of like playing games, like PlayStation <coughs> games, but your face is never in it. Um, but now I've turned to like live streaming my days just to experiment and, and push myself out of my comfort zone. One thing I've noticed is you feel there's a bit of pressure to entertain consistently. And it's like, you don't want to be quiet, which is a bit challenging. But then you realize actually watching people, people will still find some fascination in it, even if you're not responding back, because um, they can ask questions. And the second like cool thing is I've created a, a scene in OBS. So OBS is the streaming kind of like application that you use to stream to these platforms. I've created a scene that is made up of, um, like, obviously, I'm, if I'm in a meeting, then I can mute it so nobody can hear um, what I'm speaking about. They can still see me. So if you AI kind of like reverse engineered my uh, math movements, chances are you could work out what I was saying. Um, but I'm playing Don't Be a Doorstop episodes. So I've created Don't Be a Doorstop for the last, like, three years, I think we've been running it, which is, like, 50-plus episodes, and that's on a playlist. So when I'm in a meeting, I can play Don't Be a Doorstop in the background, which means I'm introducing people that now start seeing me on, on Twitch or uh, YouTube streaming, they'll get to see Doorstop kind of like, which is kind of cool. And it saves me then being worried about, oh, I have to turn off the stream or I have to turn off the camera and that stuff. I, I want to try and like go without having the interruptions. And uh, it's inspired by, I, I saw Gary Vee do the same. So if you don't know Gary uh, Vachanek, yeah, Gary Vee. Gary Vaynerchuk. Yeah, I'm mispronouncing his surname. Gary Vaynerchuk, he basically is a, a marketeer, American guy, um, born in the Soviet Union, moved over to America, and then has built up um, like his, his dad's wine company, then moved on to his own agency. A lot of the stuff that he has done over the years has inspired me. A lot of the stuff that he does is very intense as well. So sometimes you'll be like, actually, this is too much, and you step away. But uh, something I spotted him doing recently is live streaming his office. It's literally in his office where he has this counter of like, and times he mutes and unmutes. Uh, so you can see when he's speaking on the camera and it's a chance to interact with people throughout the day, especially if you like working from home and stuff, like it'd be really interesting to see if there was a, kind of like that culture of live streaming or day to day and, and kind of building connect connections with other people that are doing that. And he's encouraging people that is the kind of like an aspect of like a new wave. Like let's say there was a live stream of a salon and you just see the salon in the day. I, I do definitely remember in North Wales, there was, I think it was like a, goat farm or, or some sort of farm of some sorts where they were live streaming goats and people would watch that. And I think they were making money off it. And then you start selling goat products um, off the back of it, which is quite clever. So ultimately, I've been doing it just to, again, get me out of my comfort zone, 
again to trial a new skill a skill keep it interesting and um to kind of get more comfortable with doing pieces to camera people watching you just because i want to get better it's all a case of like learning and refining i mentioned in the don't be a doorstop podcast about <clears throat> i've watched back some old videos that i found of me on my youtube channel and i find it so fascinating to watch the first ones these are just pieces to camera the first episode was like fine it was it wasn't energetic it was just straight to the camera to the point and concise which is great but there was just no, no character no like energy but the 10th episode i've got that like youtube energy where <laughs> you're like hey guys how you doing like this is a blah 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 and i'm like to the point and i'm just sharing stuff that i saw that week or like websites that were interesting to me and um even in like 10 episodes you'll notice the difference so ultimately like it might not be for you that you end up doing video work you might be a writer and you can write, or it might be that you just want to do audio, that you just want to do podcast stuff, like whatever works for you, do it for you. But yeah, if there is a realm of like outside your comfort zone, it would be like talking to somebody. It's like try talking with somebody and recording it. So a podcast with a friend, good starting point. Then introducing video, great starting point. Then you could revert to doing like solo pieces. So I feel in doing this switch of like, we've done a bunch of episodes together, Tom and I, my brother, Tom, now doing it solo, I feel far more comfortable because I feel like there's a baseline of comfort and now I can take it into a different realm and speak about just again, more intricate things, but like learning more of the skills of trying to keep somebody entertained, like looking at the camera and looking at you guys on the other side and because you've been kind enough to give me some of your time. So yeah, I would say don't be afraid <clears throat> to be seen trying. Your best is outside of your comfort zone. It's not in your comfort zone. It's outside your comfort zone. And then, if you start saying, Hey, I'm going to, you know, start a business next year, or, Hey, I'm going to start that side hustle, or, Hey, I'm going to quit my job this year and do this like travel, travel vlogging, whatever, whatever, whatever it is, you're ultimately probably going to get a bunch of haters along the way. So two sides to it. One, you might get a bit of kickback. Uh, you might get people laugh at you and think, Oh, look at this person doing these videos and so forth. Chances are, there is somebody on the other side watching this, like, look at Dan, he looks silly doing this video, right? I'm going to carry on doing them. And ultimately, this is one brick of many bricks that is going to build the wall. So I have to put one brick down anyway. So you come to kind of like ignoring the embarrassment, ignoring the potential kind of opinions of others and all that stuff as well. Kind of push forward because you're just focused on yourself. So don't worry about other people's opinions. And if it requires kind of like removing yourself from certain people, it's probably going to have to happen. Ultimately, you want to have that, like I was mentioning last time about brainwashing yourself with positivity, that you want to see this in a positive light, that you can do business, that you're a good, a good entrepreneur, that you can do this stuff. It doesn't mean that you're not going to find it hard or you might fail along the way and, and thing, but failure is only failure if you stop. If you don't stop, then you're not a failure. You might fail and kind of like make mistakes, but you're not a failure so long as you don't stop. So it is that determination and grit. And this stuff is like embedded in me because I've done it myself and also I talk about it and try and help others kind of like ignite those aspects and um, within themselves and within their own journeys regardless if they're kind of doing a side project they're an employee they're self-employed they're a sole trader like whatever iteration of entrepreneurship or even if they're doing like being entrepreneurial inside of their own company um, for promotion or ownership or anything like that so yeah I would encourage you just to like when you start putting yourself out there, start to just see what the response is. And it might be that there are some people that you start to withdraw from all in the name of protecting the positivity. It takes a lot of energy to do this. Um, and you kind of want to stay in a bubble of some sorts of the positive energy and kind of ignore uh, any sort of negative opinions or, or that wasn't great. Like your video is really choppy or that wasn't great. Your audio wasn't great. Well, ultimately it's fine. I've got a thousand videos to do so i'm just getting the first ones out the way I, I kind of always kind of speak about that with any sort of like creative let's say you're like a music artist like the analysis paralysis of like focusing too hard on, on one particular track like ultimately you're going to be a music artist for your entire life you've got a thousand tracks to produce so don't get hung up on on one track you know similar with any sort of creative output if you're an artist you, you're probably going to do a thousand paintings so don't get caught up in the first ones. The first ones can be rough and ready. It reminds me of the Simpsons 
if you look, if you Google the Simpsons, you'll be able to see the first like iteration of the Simpsons family. And the first iteration is real sketchy. Now, if you look at the modern version of the family, they, they look completely different. The, the similarities because they're still yellow, but um, they look completely different. Now, if that first version hadn't been created, then the last version or the latest version wouldn't be here. So it's all about that like messy progress. It's okay to have messy progress. Like you've seen me do messy progress, not only in like this channel, but in the Don't Be A Doorstop channel, like Tom and I have done messy progress. I was listening to, um, so Simon Squibb does uh, these really good kind of like interviews, like what's your dream um, and gets people on the street to kind of like say, oh, I'd love to do this. And he's like, cool, well, I'll pay 5,000 pounds if you quit your job now. Or like, if you bake me that cake and meet me here tomorrow, I'll pay 10 grand if I like the cake or whatever. Trying to like help people be more entrepreneurial because uh, he believes everybody has an entrepreneurial kind of like side to them. It just needs to be like encouraged out of them and given the chance. And I was listening to one of his podcasts with a guy that runs like festivals and they were talking about how expensive it was to run a podcast. They were like, it would take like 30 K to kick off like a decent podcast. Now agreed. If you want a particular level of podcast, cool, go and spend 30,000 pounds to book in studio time, to get the microphones together, to have you into uh, like interviews set up with different people. But like, now that piece of information is out there, maybe people are like, okay, I now have to save 30,000 pounds before I do a podcast. And I'm like, that's not true. Like most of us these days have phones and it's completely fine to record for free on your phone and, you know, find some Wi-Fi. So if you even don't have like, like high mo mobile data for like upload, go to a library, get on the free Wi-Fi and then upload the file that you've just recorded locally on your phone to YouTube. Like that's how you can start your podcast. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. It doesn't need to be 30,000. And I'm like, really, I want to always in my journey, always find like the simplest iteration of something. You can always add quality and production later on. Um, and it's always about like that momentum. So not only am I talking about momentum of like positivity, but also momentum of like, it's okay to have that like messy progress. Um, so you don't have to buy all the production. You don't have to buy like a, a thousand pound camera. You don't have to buy an expensive laptop, like just get the bare minimum to get going and try and get momentum, just get like momentum and focus energy on that. And it will just build like, again, it's just one brick a day. Um, you'll end up with a wall at some point, won't you? Um, so yeah, just to recap, don't be afraid to be seen trying your best is outside of your comfort zone. And don't be afraid to cut out haters. You need positivity and momentum to achieve your goals. And you'll be able to do it. You will be able to do it. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. So life is 100% mindset. And I need to come up with a good tagline for this because my doorstop one is like, keep hammering those nails. So I'll need to come up with a tagline. And um, actually, maybe that'll be the comment um, for this video. Like, what kind of tagline can I start introducing to these videos? you know what I'm about. It's about entrepreneurship. It's about business. It's about six figure agency, which is my community that I want to start doing again, building a community. It's outside my comfort zone, but I'm doing it anyway. So yeah, feel free to comment. Would love to answer any questions you have about my journey or uh, my business and stuff. And if you're interested in kind of like the encouragement and having somebody alongside of you join my six figure agency, sorry, fix six figure Academy. I can't even say that right. Six, six figure Academy. And what I want to do is build up a bunch of people that are kind of doing the same thing and need that uh, kind of peer to peer support and that encouragement It's literally free right now. It's free. It's good. If you join now, it's going to stay free. So even if at some point I decide to make it as a paid community, like it won't matter because you're in now and it's free for you. So um, I'll leave a link in the description and I think that's for it for now. And until next time, if you haven't seen me on Twitch streaming or YouTube streaming, then I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for chatting. See you now. Bye.